A common trend in the personal finance community is this notion of living below your means, meaning you are able to live on less than what you make. Most successful savers and financially successful people in general have mastered the living within your means phenomena. In fact, they have mastered it so well that they actually live below their means. As for the rest of us, we must crawl before we can walk. Before we can master living within or under our means, we need to know how to stop living above our means. In this episode, I'm sharing some simple ways you can live within your means and still enjoy a life you love. Be prepared to take some mental notes and feel free to start implementing immediately. Welcome to the City Girl Savings Podcast. I'm Raya Reeves, founder and finance coach of City Girl Savings. I turned my life around with budgeting many years ago, and now I'm on a mission to help others do the same. I fully believe that you can enjoy your life on a budget, and this weekly show will focus on the intersection of money and the city girl lifestyle. Join me every week along with some special guests as I share my experiences, advice, and guidance on navigating life and money as an experience-loving millennial. First things first, if you want to live within your means, you absolutely need to understand your financial situation. And the number one way to do that is with a budget. How can you live within your means if you don't even know what your means are? Before you can start pinpointing where you can cut back, if you can make more money, what your situation needs to help you reach your goals, you need to know exactly what is coming in and going out. Now, the best way to get this information is through a budget. A budget is simply a tool. It's a tool that should show you what money is coming in over the course of a month and where the money is being spent over the course of that same month. So basically, what's coming in and what's going out. If you've never created a budget before, or if for whatever reason your past budgets didn't show that information, I think it's best to look back at your last month's bank statements and credit card statements. Okay, so I understand that this may be a time consuming exercise, but if you have no idea what's been happening with your money, the only way to get that information is to look at your past behaviors. So pull up last month's bank account statement, last month's credit card statements, whatever accounts you use to spend money. Write down how much money you made through your main job and any side hustles referring to your bank statements. You should be able to see what money came in. Then write down your recurring bills and expenses. Lastly, write down all of your discretionary spending. If the numbers are telling you you probably spent more than you made, you are living above your means. And the first step is to know. The second step is to change. Now, whether you overspend or not, cutting back your spending can help you live within your means. After reviewing your previous month's spending in detail, you should be able to see exactly where your money went. And Nine times out of 10, this is usually the case with all of my clients and the City Girl Savings community. Discretionary spending is often where people are overspending the most and exceeding their means. So, when I say discretionary spending, I mean things that are non necessities and they're nice to haves. So, going out to eat, shopping, buying clothes. Things that you don't necessarily need to spend your money on, but it's nice to. So start by giving yourself a limit on discretionary spending moving forward. So once you've identified that you are overspending in this area, we got to set a limit. A great way to determine the limit to set is to look at how much money or income you have left over after your bills and priorities are covered. 
okay, so at this point, you know what you make every month. You know what your spending is every month. What is left after you have spent all of your money on the necessities, the bills, the required things every month? What are you left with? Whatever that leftover amount is, that's where you want to start with your discretionary spending limit. Now, once you've gotten to a place where you've managed to save some money in the discretionary spending category, I want you to shift your focus to recurring expenses. Is there any service or subscription that you aren't using, but you're spending your money on? Is there anything that can be cut down or cut out like cable or gym fees? Cutting back your spending can get you below that threshold of spending more than you make. And if you find that cutting back your expenses doesn't get you below that threshold, your only other option is to bring in more money. Now, speaking of making more money, let's spend some time here. I don't want you to sleep on making more money because one surefire way to ensure you are living within your means and even under those means is to increase the amount of money you bring in on a regular basis. And the great news about making more money is that there are so many options available. There are a variety of ways anyone can bring in more money to help you either get to break even or get to profitable month over month. I am going to share a few ideas and any that spark your interest, like take note and do some research and see which ones you can get going as soon as possible if making more money is something that you've been thinking about. So you could work overtime at your current job if it's applicable. You could become a virtual assistant or a freelance writer. You can start a blog and immediately use display advertising. You can rent out a room in your place. You can sell old items or things you no longer want, sell them online or host a garage sale. You can adjust your tax withholdings if you typically get a refund every year. You can take nice photos of different sceneries, animals, and sell those photos online. Or you can take online surveys. Now, if a second job is actually something that you are seeking to help you break even every month, it's best to just bite the bullet and go ahead and get that second job. Okay? And remember, This is a temporary situation. If you are seeking out more money to help you break even or get ahead, it doesn't have to last forever, right? Use that additional income stream strategically so that you are spending the least amount of time possible there, but you're making the biggest impact. And if you can turn your hobbies or things you enjoy doing into a business, then don't procrastinate it. Get started as soon as possible so you can start turning a profit. Got a money question you want me to answer on the podcast? I'm starting a new segment on the show called City Girl Solutions, where I answer any questions you have for me. Money, business, life, you name it. Submit your questions at citygirlsavings.com forward slash QA and get your question answered by me in a future episode. And did you know that we have so many free money resources on our blog, Instagram, and TikTok channels? Find us across the internet at City Girl Savings. Okay, moving on. The next easy way to live within your means, stop relying on your credit cards. If you are using your credit cards, but paying them off in full every month, then By all means, continue doing what you're doing because you are probably getting some sort of rewards or points and that can be a great way to leverage credit cards to your benefit. Okay, so if you are strategically using credit cards, you are not paying interest, you're paying your balances in full, continue doing what you're doing. However, if you are incorporating the use of credit cards in your budget for expenses you should be using to cover with cash... I want you to stop immediately. It is not possible to live within your means, but have a ton of credit card debt. Credit card debt comes with insanely high interest and that interest can keep you in debt for a lot longer than you think. 
Another reason why you don't want to rely on credit cards is because your credit card company can decrease your credit limit at any time or even close your credit card without warning. Okay, it's in the terms and agreements that came with the card. It happens more often than you may think. If you are relying on credit and your credit is taken away from you, what are you going to do? Break the habit now of using credit cards as a scapegoat and start using only the money you have to get by. All right, moving on. Next easy way to live within your means, do not worry about keeping up with the Joneses. Now, I totally understand how hard this can be. With social media being as big as it is, it is incredibly easy to see what your friends are doing, what your family is doing, what celebrities are doing at every moment. Not only does this take your mind off of what you should be doing for you, it can make you feel like you need to buy things or go places just to keep up. Resist the social pressure to buy things you don't need, to go to places you don't need to be going to just to keep up with friends or celebrities. You can use credit to fake that life for a short amount of time, but when it runs out, and it definitely will run out, you will be paying for it. So when it comes to improving your money situation, do not compare yourself to others and do not worry about keeping up with the Joneses. You don't really know what someone's financial situation is unless you see their bank accounts. And most people aren't going to willingly show that information. So if you see an influencer or a friend or a celebrity out doing what appears to be them living their best life, don't feel anything but good for them. If you compare yourself or if you think, well, man, I wish I could do that, you don't know the full picture. People put out on social media what they want others to see. And nobody wants to see someone being broke. Nobody wants to put the bad out there. So you are comparing your bad situation to someone's great situation and you have no idea what that actually looks like. So don't worry about keeping up with the Joneses. Don't compare yourself to others. Focus on you. And the best advice I have for avoiding that need to keep up is to limit your social media scrolling. Set an alert to go off when you've exceeded a certain amount of time on a social media app. Honestly, you can spend hours and I monitor my screen time. So I make sure I'm not spending excessive amounts of time on social media unless it's from a business perspective. I rarely scroll social media from a just personal, not doing anything perspective because... You can go down that rabbit hole and it's not a pretty one. Another thing you can do is make it a point to only follow people and companies that inspire you to do better and work harder. If you are following anyone that makes you feel envious or not worthy of what you currently have, unfollow them immediately. Nothing and no one should make you feel that way. Focus on bettering yourself and bringing in more money and Don't worry about what other people have or what they're doing. Also, follow City Girl Savings on social media. Okay, the final tip I have for you to help you live within your means is to do things now that will set you up for success in the future. While learning to live within your means is not an overnight process, there are things you can do to make it happen even faster you can set yourself up for future financial success by doing the following. Using cash for all non-bill-related purchases, contributing to a 401k plan through your employer, or contributing to an IRA if a 401k plan is not available to you, saving three to six months worth of expenses for an emergency, setting and following a budget, taking the credit cards out of your wallet, and bonus points for cutting them up, 
and focusing on things that are going to better your situation. Even small changes now can lead to big results later. You don't have to give up all the things you love. You simply have to learn how to save for them to ensure that they are not forcing you to live beyond your means. That's only going to make you feel worse when you spend money on the things that truly matter to you. With the tips I shared today, anyone, no matter how much of a spender they are, can work to live within their means. Now, if you need more specialized help, do not be afraid to seek it out. There are so many resources, courses, books, coaches out there that can help you improve your situation. In fact, I'm one of them. Request a call with me and learn about my money coaching program and see if it's a fit for you. I am going to link to it in the show notes. If you've been considering working with some sort of financial coach or money coach, I want you to know what's available for you. At the end of the day, we only have this one life to live and we should be grateful for what we have, but also always striving to do better and be better. Thank you so much for tuning in to City Girl Savings today. I hope you feel empowered and inspired to master your money as you make your way to your dream life. Make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when a new episode comes out. I truly value your thoughts and feedback, so please leave a review and let me know how this podcast has impacted you. Can't wait to chat soon and make it a great day.